No, I'm Hernando County Sheriff Al Nienhuis, and this is uh, Citrus County Sheriff Mike Prendergast. Uh, uh, again, I want to go on record as saying how much we appreciate our fellow sheriffs when you uh, put out the call. Obviously, they don't ask a lot of questions. They just bring whatever they got. And uh, in this case, <clears throat> um, we are certainly happy that they were here with us because this is, uh, did not turn out the way we'd hoped. Um, I will tell you right off the bat that uh, there are no deputies or law enforcement that's been injured. Uh, I do want to correct something I said a little bit earlier, which I need to correct to make so that uh, what happened made sense. Uh, I, I know I said at our last briefing that uh, we had individuals inside that had started clearing the house. Uh, in actuality, we had a robot, the Citrus County robot inside uh, that had pretty much cleared the downstairs and we were really focusing heavily on the attic. Uh, we actually uh, uh, breached some of the gables to try to see inside because uh, this individual and his name is uh, James Buford Hines. Um, I believe the last name is H-I-N-E-S. Uh, he's 50 years old and he has a, a fairly extensive history. Uh, prior to the uh, what precipitated this, he's uh, uh, been arrested before, uh, I believe convicted of kidnapping. Um, he's been, had a uh, charge of possession of a uh, firearm by a felon. He's also had armed burglary and I think some sort of uh, domestic offense that was uh, had a, a weapon involved. So he is certainly not a stranger to law enforcement. And um, <clears throat> we actually had uh, notes in our computer-aided dispatch that he has previously, I want to say it was 2008, um, he had actually made threats of suicide by cop. Um, and he had also made threats recently uh, to some maybe some family members that he may want to do suicide by cop. So that certainly made this a much more tense situation than it otherwise would have been. Um, as I told you earlier, we had some communication with him and he, it appears, was feigning distress early on. And then uh, either because his phone died or he just decided to quit talking to us, um, he, uh, he went silent. Uh, we did. Uh, as I said earlier, we deployed a lot of resources inside and outside the uh, residence to try to figure out where he was and what his condition was. Um, and that leads me up to the fact of the robot inside, which couldn't move around very well because of some clutter in the house. And what ended up happening, we um, uh, uh, breached all the windows and were trying to see inside uh, before we actually made entry uh, into the residence because we did have some concerns that he may be lying in wait. And uh, those concerns actually came to fruition. Uh, one of uh, the deputies, and again, it's all extremely preliminary, uh, not only subject to change, it likely will change as we get more information because we obviously have a lot of evidence to uh, collect, FDLE has to come and so forth. But um, uh, in one of the bedroom windows, I was hearing over the radio that they saw some movement. <clears throat> Uh, apparently a deputy, I believe it was a Hernando County deputy, but I'm not sure of that, uh, deployed a less lethal beanbag. It's uh, shot via a shotgun to, uh, to try to incapacitate somebody because he was actually in a closet in one of the bedrooms and it apparently been there for some time. Uh, despite the fact that we did see the ceiling had, part of the ceiling had been removed and we thought he might be up there. Um, so once the uh, beanbag was deployed, um, it is my understanding based on what I heard on the radio is that he had a long gun and started firing at deputies, uh, which of course was a huge mistake on his part because uh, the deputies and very preliminary information is both uh, Hernando County deputies as well as uh, Citrus County deputies uh, did return fire. Um, it does appear as though when they took him out of the house, took him into custody, he is still alive. He is being transported to a local trauma center. Uh, obviously, his condition is unknown. It's probably very serious, but we'll, we won't know for uh, some time how serious, obviously, uh, until the doctors take a look at him. So I don't know, Sheriff, if you want to say a couple words, you're welcome to. Well, thank you, Sheriff Nienheis. And as always, we're humbled to serve, and we're really proud of our working relationship with all of our neighboring sheriffs. We simply don't have enough resources to do all of this on our own. Look at today's temperatures, 112 heat index today, and every one of us right now standing out here on this scene is profusely sweating still. And our, our resources, uh, they, they, they burn up pretty quickly whenever you're wearing ballistic armor, and especially all the SWAT gear, and you're in a very intense, uh, high-stress situation. So 
when Sheriff Nienheis called, we saddled up our team and we came down here as quickly and safely as possible to be here to give them some relief and allow some of their folks to recharge their batteries and be able to continue on because this standoff could have lasted well into tomorrow and we just don't know what else we had uh, out there in play until we could get fully inside the house and see what was happening. Again, we're very thankful, both of us, that none of our deputies were injured and uh, everybody's gonna go back home to their family, which is what we hope for and we pray for every single time we cross the threshold to go to work and serve the citizens in our communities. Thank, thank yeah. you, Sheriff Neonides. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I may be able to answer a couple questions. You pretty much know everything I know, but as I said, uh, we even, um, uh, tried to deploy a less lethal uh, once we figured out he was still alive and was not incapacitated. And I will tell you based on uh, how long he was in the house, how hot it was, and deploying uh, gas munitions, uh, I am um, surprised that he was uh, conscious and I would not have been surprised if he was actually deceased either because of the heat or uh, a self-inflicted wound or some other medical issue. So the fact that he was alive and able to uh, uh, preliminary information is uh, fire at least a couple rounds at us. Um, I did uh, hear over the radio and I'm sure the uh, Sheriff Prendergast did too, that shots were fired and then a couple more followed by a volley of uh, several shots, um, probably when we return fire uh, uh, to him. So anybody have any quick questions? Yes, sir. Would, would no, the deputies were just getting ready to make entry and the ones at the windows were actually covering uh, the rooms to try to, again, this is uh, going into a house, regardless of how much intel you do, how much video you take inside, uh, you're at a disadvantage in law enforcement going into that house, particularly if somebody is intentionally lying in wait and that's exactly what was happening here. It was really the absolute worst case scenario for us. Um, you know, obviously we would have been incapacitated or would have taken his own life or would have given up. All those are obviously much better uh, solutions for us for safety reasons. But in this particular case, he was hiding in a closet and the deputies apparently from the window, again, very preliminary based on what I'm hearing on the radio and looking at the sketch, it does appear as though the deputies were looking through the window, had breached the window and were covering it, saw some movement in the closet, did the less lethal, and then apparently that made him decide to start firing on the deputies. Yeah, he was on the second floor the no, no, he was on the front. It's all a single story, oh, but okay. we thought he had made have gone into the oh, attic the because floor. there was a portion of the ceiling we saw from the uh, robot had been torn down, appearing as though either somebody fell through from the attic or went up through uh, the kitchen into the attic. So that's why we were really surprised that he was still downstairs. But once we searched the attic from the exterior, making some holes, we were able to pretty much determine that we didn't think he was in the attic. So that put our focus back down again to the ground floor, again, getting ready to make entry. But we never actually made, a team did not enter before the, before the shooting started. Can you give us some more details about the attempted murder case? Obviously, like the murder yeah. For you and uh, basically what happened this morning, I believe it was about 3.09 uh, this morning, um, we uh, got a call of a house fire um, and um, apparently there were two individuals in the house. Um, it was a wood frame house, a wooden house, and it was completely destroyed. Um, we quickly figured out that there was um, some animosity there, uh, a former girlfriend with a new boyfriend or something similar to that. And he, this individual had apparently made threats. We developed some information that he had purchased uh, gasoline shortly before that and had made some text threats. So we had enough probable cause to arrest him for that attempt to murder because when the fire was set with the gasoline, both individuals were inside and it's really by the grace of God they got out uh, unharmed. So attempted murder by arson. Correct, correct. Yes, sir. Yep. Can, uh, we heard that his brother may have committed I have heard that too from you know from the rumor mill, but I have I can't uh, I can't confirm that. I know that was some of the things that were being said, either uh, by him or by social media or something. But I have uh, no specific knowledge of that, so I can't confirm that. A little bit was this someone who did not like law enforcement? Well, obviously he'd been in trouble before quite a bit, and uh, obviously he was uh, um, willing and able 
to do something as extreme as set a house on fire with gasoline with two people in it. So this is somebody who is pretty much capable of anything. And I think tonight shows that it is really fortunate the fact that he fired on us that uh, no, no deputy was injured because uh, he had a little bit of advantage because he knew where he was but we didn't know where he was so it's really fortunate and that's why we take so long that's why it can take seven or eight hours because uh, uh, we're in no hurry to get in into this type of situation and we want to avoid it at all costs but unfortunately sometimes uh, the 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 person we're trying to arrest makes that decision for us and we're going to respond appropriately do we know how many no, it is way too preliminary for that. I wanted to get up here. Literally, you might have heard the shots, and you probably heard um, heard them as much as I did. There were um, a short burst, and then followed by a longer burst. Um, and I think we had uh, a handful, a small number of Citrus County deputies return fire, as well as a small number of uh, Hernando County deputies. So, um, so there were there were more than just a couple shots fired. So. Could you speak to the severity? Well, yeah, it, again, depending on um, uh, his, his prognosis, um, he is going to face a lot of charges. Probably the reason he wasn't willing to give up, just attempted murder, uh, along with his history, is uh, serious. And that's why we take, took it so serious. And then combine that with the suicide by cop uh, threats and so forth, uh, it made kind of a worst case scenario. And to say it's uh, resource intensive is an understatement. Um, and as Sheriff Prendergast said, it was hot out here today, even for those of us that weren't suited up with helmets and everything. Um, and uh, there's a lot of deputies that are required to do hostage negotiation. There's uh, detectives that are trying to follow up leads that come in, like the, the allegations of you know, uh, family members and so forth. And uh, just uh, blocking off the city streets in the area to make sure that we don't get any innocent bystander hurt uh, takes dozens of deputies and again thank the good lord that uh, citrus county was quick to come because uh, we we could not have done it for this long by ourselves we would have had to ask for help and and they were quick to respond and of course their robot was uh, uh, extremely helpful too so all right anything else all right again fdle the the deputies uh, once we determine actually who uh, uh, did the fire into the weapons. They'll be put on at least mine will, and I assume yours will be leave. too, on administrative leave with pay, uh, pending the uh, outcome of the investigation by FDLE. Uh, FDLE has already been notified almost immediately, and so they're probably on their way. They should be showing up any minute. And um, we will turn uh, most of that portion of the investigation over to them, and we have a lot of follow-up to do on our side as well. So thank you all for your patience, and thank you for your understanding how hard we work to avoid a situation like this, but we are ready to take take action if necessary. So thank you all. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate all your help.